Hello, howdy, and welcome back to another Grow Lapse video all about the bush beans. I'm, I'm Catherine, the Arrow Garden Homesteader. I don't normally have trouble growing beans, but sometimes in an Arrow Garden, they can be a little hard to start. If you find the information in my videos helpful, I'd appreciate it if you'd subscribe if you have not already, and hit the like button. It helps me get found by others, and let's share the love of hydroponics. Beginning the seeds directly in the sponges tends to lead to rotting of the seeds. So I began my seeds on paper towel plastered to the inside of the cup. These are burgundy red beans. It is a bush variety. This is the same technique I used for the pea seeds and it works really well. The only issue is making sure to center the stalk in the sponge and not the seed coat. Once I had the beans all settled into their respective sponges, all I had to do was keep an eye on the growth and make sure to add a trellis level every time the growth exceeded the previous layer. I purposely selected a bush variety that I knew would not grow out of hand, but I still wanted something to keep the plants a little contained since I knew space would be a little tight. These plants did wonderfully in a bounty. I had four plants growing down the middle of an arrow garden and they seemed to have enough room. I chose a purple variety to hopefully make it easier to see the pods when they got big enough. Purple seeds does not mean they begin purple or stay purple after cooking, but, but they were really nice fresh in a salad. The plant did tend to get brown leaves after a while and drop lots of leaf litter as well as spent blooms. This is not a tidy plant. I did the best I could to stay on top of browning leaves, but the tiny blossoms just had to be vacuumed up. So be prepared for that if you do choose to grow beans. I'm not sure every bean variety is like this, but these burgundy ones certainly were. Another interesting thing I found was that after the first set of pods, the plant began to put out more flowers and produced another set of pods. I did find that the next set of pods did not get fertilized as well as the first set, so the pods tended to feel hollow, which didn't matter because they still tasted great, but if you're thinking of saving seeds, this would be more difficult. I could have fixed this by tapping on the flowers as they appeared to help with pollination on the first go around, but with the bushiness of the plant, it became difficult to find the flowers sometimes. And finally, after that second batch of pods, the plant began pushing out new growth, setting up for another batch of pods. So I could have left the plants going a little longer, but I felt that the leaves were looking rather ratty and it was dropping a lot of leaf waste onto carpeting. So I felt it was just time for it to go. I felt that this was a great addition to my winter garden and worked well both in salads as well as cooking up with onions. This is something I would definitely plant again, and given the productivity of the plants, I would be curious to try setting up several bounties to see if many plants could produce enough green beans to run a canner load. Maybe next year's winter garden should be focused on actually preserving a few things. Let me know what you think. I have linked the playlist both for the whole garden updates as well as all of these grow lapses. If you found this useful, give the video a like so others can also find this video, and a subscribe so you know when the next video is uploaded. And I will see you next time on the Arrow Garden Homestead.